Netflix really graced Thanksgiving by releasing the Addams Family spin-off titled Wednesday. Hello there guys and welcome back to our channel. Netflix has released a total of 8 episodes of Wednesday which you can watch as of now. If you're already done binging this show, then here is Wednesday's Season 1 finale recap ending explained. The ending explained. Before stepping into the spookiness of Wednesday, here's a warning that this video contains major spoilers for Season 1 if you haven't watched the show yet, so go watch it and then come back to this video. You can stream all 8 episodes as of now. The show tells the story of Wednesday Adams, played by Jenna Ortega, the eldest Adams sibling. The story follows as she gets enrolled into a boarding school for all the supernatural outcasts or weirdos and eventually finds herself caught up in a murder mystery. Well, the good thing is that the murder mystery is solved at the end of Season 1, so fans are not left on a cliffhanger until the release of a second season. In the finale, Wednesday finds the identity of the killer, or should we say, killers. But still, the show ends with two cliffhangers, which means that the story of Wednesday hasn't yet met its conclusion. There will be a second season that will continue her story. But how did the show actually end? We'll break down the finale episode right here and now. But before we do that, please be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and do remember to hit that notification bell to get more updates like this going forward. Now let's continue on. Identity of the Killer the mystery monster hide in the show was no one else but the lovable boy of the town, Tyler, played by Hunter Doohan. It was him all along. Wednesday was the first one to find out that it was Tyler who turned into the deadly monster, but she couldn't convince the others when she wanted to get the truth out of Tyler by torturing him. And it was also revealed that it was never Dr. Kinbot who was manipulating Tyler into becoming a murderous monster. Instead, the mastermind was nevermore dorm mother Marilyn Tornhill, who was using Tyler for her own purpose. By the finale, it was depicted that Tornhill is a devoted believer of the evil preacher Joseph Crackstone. Tornhill's main motive was to bring him back to life, to resurrect him so he could get rid of all the supernatural freaks from this world. His main target was Wednesday, whose ancestor Goody Adams was the one who killed him. So now you know the reason why Tornhill hates every supernatural being, but ends up using the same means to end them. Fortunately, she fails to carry out her plan. For a brief moment, Tornhill actually resurrects a very ugly and gross dead crackstone, but a hero enters the scene and saves the day. Enid, after fully transforming into a werewolf, beats the living life out of Tyler and he's eventually apprehended. After a furious fight on the spot, Wednesday, with the help of her schoolmates, snatches the crown of victory from Crackstone. Wednesday aims at Crackstone's heart and ends him in his terror. Meanwhile, Tornhill tries to kill Wednesday again, but Eugene, a Nevermore student, saves Wednesday by sending an army of bees after Tornhill. In the end, Wednesday knocks Tornhill out. So the good people win and the bad guys lose. A very simple and plain ending, right? but not in a bad sense though. However, there's still more. Cliffhanger number one. The show doesn't end there though. In the end, Tyler is shown being carried away in a van while he's unconscious. After a brief moment, he opens his eyes and then transforms. After his transformation, he manages to escape, so we don't know where he went. During an interview, the creators of the show, Alfred Goff and Miles Miller, were asked about the future of Tyler in the show, to which the showrunners responded, I think that character is potentially very interesting because he clearly has some feelings for Wednesday and he's a Jacqueline Hyde, Goff said. So I think that that is going to be the fun of that character going forward and you know, how often he would potentially pop up in the next season is still to be determined but we just liked having him out there and Hunter, who plays him, he's such a fantastic actor. He really hides the ball very well and then when you see that turn, you're like, oh crap, he was there the whole time. Cliffhanger number 2. To tease the fans even more, the finale ends with another cliffhanger. In the final moments, Wednesday receives photos from a stalker and a note which reads, I'm watching you. Who could be stalking Wednesday? What's the purpose behind keeping an eye on her? We still don't know. Only the second season can tell us because Goff and Miller already know the truth. According to Miller, I just think it's important that you have a roadmap for where we're going, he added. You don't want to be cocky or anticipate you'll get a second season, 
but I think you have to know where you're going in terms of steering the ship story-wise. There are always those beats you want to plot at the end of the season that hopefully entice an audience to come back, but you need to know what those mean and have a sense of what your story is going to be. So yeah, we're just going to wait and see what the audience thinks and hopefully get the go-ahead to go forward to season 2. With these two unresolved scenes, there's a hope that the show will get renewed. Are you guys also excited about a potential season 2? Do let us know in the comments down below.